Now one update that Jagex has been teasing for a couple months now is the Giants Foundry. Now until today we didn't really know what that was, but just a few minutes ago they finally revealed that the Giants Foundry is a new smithing training method that is going to be coming out pretty soon. So today I wanted to have a look at what the method is, where it's going to fit into the current meta, all the requirements and anything else you might want to know about it. If you find it helpful, I always appreciate a like on the video. Anyway, let's get started. Alright, so a couple weeks ago I looked up what the word Foundry even meant, and well, it seemed pretty obvious that it was going to be a smithing update, but beyond the name, that's pretty much all we knew. So after months of secrecy, it's finally been revealed that the Giants Foundry is an all-new smithing skilling method built by the Giants of Gilinor and operated by you. Now the Giants Foundry is going to be accessible at a very low level. There's actually only one main requirement to access the Giants Foundry, and that is the Sleeping Giants quest, which is going to be a new quest introduced with the update. The quest itself is going to be a novice level quest, and the only requirement is 15 smithing, so effectively the Giants Foundry only has a smithing level requirement of 15, so it's accessible at an extremely low level. Now the Giants Foundry is not going to be in an instance, and it's also going to be a safe minigame, which means there's no way you can die, but for hardcore Ironman, ultimate Ironman, you should be safe. So what exactly is the Giant's Foundry? Now the Giant's Foundry is going to require you to use all of your skill and perseverance to forge swords of giant proportions. By working on commission, you're going to have to find the perfect sword design, choose the appropriate metal, uh, one that you have unlocked anyway, and work with a variety of tools to get the perfect killing edge. Now one thing that really differentiates the Giant's Foundry from pretty much any other smithing method is there is some skill involved in the smithing process. Now, this pretty much means that if you're not paying attention or you don't know how to do the minigame, it's possible to lose or break the resources you put in, as well as not gain any experience. But if you do actually know what you're doing, you're going to get a higher value per bar than any other smithy method in the game. Which means you're going to actually need less resources to participate in this minigame than other smithy methods if you know what you're doing. So the gameplay loop will work as follows. First up, you need to get a commission to make a sword from a new NPC called Kovac. Now the commission is going to define what kind of blade you will have to make, and the commissions can have different properties to them, such as making a narrow sword or a spiked sword. However, this won't affect how difficult it is to make the sword. The only thing that really affects that is the metal that you use. Uh, so once you've received the commission, the first thing you need to do is grab a mold, and Kovac will have a huge library of different molds for you to choose from. Now once you've chosen your mold, you need to move over to the Crucible, which is where you will melt your metals down. Now the Crucible heats and liquefies the metal you put into it, and it'll accept bronze through rune bars, or any metal items that you want to recycle. So that's finally a way to get rid of unwanted plate bodies and battle axes. Now I want to stop here for a second because that's pretty interesting. Finally a way to kind of break down existing smith items. Is this going to make much of an item sink? Not really sure. If you're able to melt these down for the same amount of bars you put into it, I think it'll bump up the prices of all these items a bit. A really interesting idea though. Now to create a giant sword, you need to put in 20 bars worth of materials or potentially 20 bars worth of recycled material. Now once the crucible is full, you're now going to pour the molten metal into your mold. Now the lower tier ores won't take very long to form, but once you get up to runite, it'll take a lot longer to shape the sword, and it'll take a much more precise temperature range to make sure it doesn't get broken. Now another really interesting thing here is, Kovac believes that swords made of an alloy, which is a mixture of two different materials, would be better. I guess maybe what that infers is that if you use, for example, adamantite to make a mithril plate body, maybe it'll just be better or quicker or whatnot, but, but I'm not really sure if you could use adamantite in your runite smithing and have it be better, that wouldn't really make any sense. Now once the molten metal has cooled off, now it's time to refine it. Now you'll have a variety of different tools to do this with. You have a trip hammer, a grindstone, the polishing wheel, a lava pool, and the waterfall. And there's this very uh, overwhelming looking HUD that will indicate what exactly you need to do and when. I really hope this is a little bit more intuitive than uh, some of the other kind of mini games are like this. Some of the worst ones that come to mind are when you're sailing to Fossil Island, that is terrible. But I presume to change the temperature, you either want to use the lava pool or the waterfall. And then the bottom part of the interface indicates which of the actual tools you need to use that first part looks like the trip hammer, and then the grindstone, and then finally the polishing wheel. 
so eventually you'll manage to reach 100% completion and if you haven't ruined the sword you can hand it to Kovac who will reward you with some experience as well as boundary reputation. The higher quality of the sword the more rewards you'll get. Okay, so the experience is one of the most important parts of this method and as far as I'm aware they don't actually state what the experience rate is going to be yet. However, they do put it in reference to other smithing methods, for example, the Blast Furnace or Cannonballs. So the Giant's Foundry is going to be moderately click intensive and a more interactive experience than other methods. It'll have a greater focus on XP and it'll be accessible to lower level players, but there's also some potential for profit as well. Now they state that you can expect to make around 10 to 20 swords per hour, but they don't say how much experience you get per sword, so as of yet we don't really know the exact experience rate. Now one of the key benefits of the Giant's Foundry is that you're going to use a lot less resources per hour compared to the other smithing methods. They even estimate that you'll save around 85% on resources compared to Blast Furnace, compared to smithing Mithril, Adamant, or Rune items just at an anvil. Now because of how efficient it is on resources, it seems like it could be positioned as very good for Ironman accounts, but because of that, I would imagine the experience rate per hour is going to be much less than Blast Furnace and maybe even less than regular Anvil Smithing as well. Maybe somewhere around 150k per hour Smithing experience per hour with the potential for some profit as well would be my total guess. Now beyond the experience, you're also going to be accruing Foundry Reputation. Now this is going to be a separate currency that you can use to spend in the Giant's Foundry shop. So what can you buy in the shop? Well, to begin with here, we have ore packs, which is just a variety of different ores that you receive all in one go. Nothing much to report on there. Uh, next up, we have molds. Now these molds would be usable in the minigame itself and would help with all different kinds of commissions and would give you a leg up on quality before you even start smithing. The better molds that are available do have a higher smithing level requirement to use, but these will help you out within the foundry. Now one of the more interesting ones is the 8 Cannonball Mold. So this would allow you to use 2 steel bars to smith 8 cannonballs at once which would double your production speed. Again, super useful for Ironmen or for other players who are looking for a slightly more profitable way to still AFK train smithing. So with the new mold you'd be able to smith around 4000 cannonballs per hour which is double which you know that does help out a lot for Ironmen. And the next up here we have the smithing catalyst. Now this is a very interesting item. Now it's an unstackable item that is used when creating bars at a furnace, not including the blast furnace. Now it'll half the amount of coal required to smith the bar as well as providing double the experience. However, when you use it, the catalyst will be consumed when the bar is made, so you need a ton of them to continue smithing in this manner. Now I would assume it would be untradeable and is an attempt to make non-blast furnace smithing somewhat viable. But again, besides Ironman, I'm not really sure if this would ever really be useful to use on a main account, but whatever. Uh, next up here we have Kovac's Grog, which is simply just a plus four smithing boost potion or drink of some sort. Uh, we have a Hill Giant Club ornament kit for the dozen or so players who use that. And we have a cosmetic giant helmet. Uh, so that is it for the Giants Foundry dev blog. Now overall I'm actually kind of excited for a new skilling update. I really enjoyed Guardians of the Rift so if it's anything as quality as that then I think it'll be a good addition to the game. Let me know what you guys think down below as always. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Now before I go here I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Nello, Aleandra, the Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed to the Dragon Tier. Really, I appreciate it so much. Also, a giant thank you to Kaiten987, Mexos, Base Titch, MDM001, and YoYoSub89 for being subscribed to the Runite Tier. Appreciate you guys as well. As always, if anyone's looking for a direct way to support me, YouTube membership is the best way to do so. You'll get immortalized in all of my future videos. You can get a custom role on my Discord server, and you'll even know when all my videos are coming out. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.